Hey, this is Kev from Blender Binge. In this video, we're going to go over basic modeling with curves. Ready? Let's go. So I'm going to start by going to Create. And underneath Mesh, we have another section called Curve. And in my videos, I have not touched this yet for good reason. So Curves allow us to very similar to Photoshop and Illustrator or Inkscape, uh, you can create paths. So what I'm talking about here is if I hit circle, and this is the easiest to show you with, and I go into edit mode, okay, so I changed from object mode to edit mode, or I hit tab on the keyboard, I have a circle that's made out of these Bezier curves. You've seen these before, haven't you? I bet you have. And these behave just like they do inside Photoshop and Illustrator and Inkscape or Corel or whatever else you use. These are curves. And you can edit them just like you do inside all those other programs that you've probably used before. And if you haven't, all right, all you do is you right click on the middle and you can drag it out, okay, these little dots in the middle or you can drag it out by these handles and they will sharpen your curve or loosen your curve or really tweak your curve and when you're when you're out of edit mode you can see that it completely alters the shape of my curve so that's the first thing you can do and there are a number of different curve types you can use circle being one of the easiest I delete this. If I hit delete on the keyboard, I can use Bezier, and that drops in a Bezier curve. Okay, and it's, it works the same way. You hit tab, and you get these two little points, and you can manipulate and create this curve or change this curve. Another cool thing you can do with this is you can extrude, so you can create a longer curve from this. So when you're in Bezier and you're in, edit mode you can go to tools and you can hit extrude and you can pull out more of these all right and manipulate them just like you did with the original and you can lengthen the curve that way okay I'm gonna delete that I'm gonna go back to create we also have NURBS curve which uses a kind of a, a proxy, a, a box shape around to manipulate the curve. And I'm not going to get too technical with why this works and how this works in this video because this is pretty much just beginner stuff. But just know that this is, this is how it just creates this sharp angle around here and you use this to control the shape of the curve. And it works the same with the NURB circle. A NURB circle is a different than the Bezier circle because the NURB circle just draws a, uh, a, a box around your object and you, you manipulate the curves by pulling and pushing on the box. Okay, it's this. So I'm just going to go ahead and just leave that out and just say that this is how you go ahead and, and start manipulating when you're done you just hit tab again and there's your shape and the last thing you see here is path so if I were to delete this and I hit path okay this goes in and it gives you a straight path so you can go ahead and tweak this and it's it's NURBS based so it's similar in that you go ahead and pull on these square points and manipulate your curve that way. All right. And underneath path, there's draw curve. And the kind of thing that I see infuriating a lot of people on the forums and things is that you, you can't just like you can't just go and hit draw curve and go in and draw a curve. I, I'm not sure exactly why. I, I, I'm sure that the awesome people who dedicate lots of free time to developing Blender so that all of us can use it for free and have fun with this. Um, coded it that way originally 
I, I don't understand why, but I'm just going to say that they have their reasons and that I'm cool with that. So there is a workaround for this. If you want access to draw curve, all you have to do is create one of these things, hit tab, all right, go in and you hit A to select the whole thing on the keyboard, then hit delete. It'll say segment, vertices, dissolve vertices, just hit vertices and it gets rid of that. And then you're free to go in and draw your curve. Now I don't like just drawing a curve willy-nilly in here, okay, because it, it, it doesn't adhere to any plane. It'll be like all over the place. When you rotate, you're going to see your curves like all over. So if you hit 7 on the numeric keypad on your keyboard, you go into top view. And here I can go in, hit draw curve, okay, as long as I didn't click out of this, okay, as long as I'm still inside this, this uh, NURBS curve or Bezier curve or whatever I created here. I can hit draw circle, draw curve and go in and draw and draw whatever I want. And here I have a nice curve. All right. So if I just rotate back again, you can see I hit tab and there's my curve. Simple, right? So one last time, because this gets very confusing for people, I'm going to delete this. Okay. I cannot if I'm just in, you know, if I just hit file, new, new scene, right? I can't just go to create and hit draw curve. <laughs> I can't do it. All right. So don't try because life is going to start to really suck if you do this. Don't, don't do that. So what I just do is I can go in and hit any one of these. All right. Bezier, whatever. Draw that out. Okay. I just go into edit mode by hitting tab, select both of these. And I hit delete. Vertices, sure. Gets rid of that. Okay, and then I go to the top view by hitting 7 on the keyboard. And here I can draw my curve. There's my curve. Hit tab. I drew a K. Who, <laughs> Kevin? Who, <laughs> K? That's how you create curves. In the next segment, I'm going to show you now how to go ahead and start making shapes out of this. So to do that, here is this little curve data button. You click that and it goes to properties for this curve. I can now go in and I can say my shape is either 2D or 3D. Right now it's 3D. If I hit 2D, it'll fill this in with a renderable surface. It's not polygon. It's still, it's still uh, curves, but it's renderable, meaning it will render. Right. And now I have access to some really cool tools here where I can go ahead and say modification down here. I can hit extrude. Ooh, gives it some thickness. I can bevel it, okay, by creating a little bit of a bevel, give it a nice little edge, and I can control the resolution, how many, how sharp this edge is. Okay, right now it's at zero, so it's just going from this, this curve to this curve, and it's just filling it in. I can hit resolution and round that off, so now I have a nice rounded edge, and I can really control the look of my, of my K. Cool, right? I also have 3D. 3D will get rid of this fill and leave me with just a nice extruded outline. And it defaults to half, so I'm going to change that to full. And now I have a nice shape, renderable shape, okay, created out of my, my letter. And I can also create, I can also control, okay, bevel will create thickness, okay, offset creates how much it's offset from the original curve. Okay, you have to be careful when you're doing this because you start seeing these sharp areas that I created. They start going really kind of, kind of funny. Okay, I have my extrude depth, 
So if I just wanted to kind of fill in the wire, I could do that. Okay. I could say how round my wire is, how thick it is, how thin it is, just by messing with resolution here. And that allows me to go ahead and create shapes based off of the curves. Okay, and this is a very basic video, so this goes a lot deeper where you can start using this stuff to create objects with, like beer bottles and walls and all sorts of stuff. I know people that do model cars based on nerves and, and, and curves. So this gets really deep. Okay, I personally, for most things, I like to stick to polygons because I find it's faster for my workflow. But other people love curves. And they're very useful for a lot of things. If you're creating you know, a video game environment with lots of wiring or some cool like motion graphics piece that has wires and stuff, this is really, really cool for that. And uh, a number of different things, like, like I said, you know, architecture, walls, things like that where you're going to want to draw things out and then extrude them. So it can be pretty fast for that sort of thing. So go in and play with this. Okay, watch this video again, go ahead, play with this, and get a feel for how this works. And in the next video, I'll show you some really cool things uh, about going to File, Import, and taking in a scalable vector graphic that you create in Inkscape or Illustrator and uh, coming in and using that with this and it starts to get really powerful for making logos and things like that okay so if you like this video and you got something out of it please hit like subscribe turn on that bell notification so you see the other videos I create and uh, go in and play you'll get good the more you play with this the faster you'll get and it'll start being awesome so go be awesome thanks talk to you later bye